Good day and greetings. This is Dr. Charles Cotter. I'd like to welcome you to episode five of the HRM Strategic Performance Advisor video series. Those of you that were able to watch the preceding four episodes, you'll recall that the objective of this particular video series is to provide HR professionals with a toolkit to empower and to enable them to graduate from a level two of strategic maturity transactional to level four, in other words, to transform to a strategic performance advisor. Therefore, the focus of episode five will be on the HR metrics process. I'm going to propose a five-step process, uh, which are often referred to as the five E's. In other words, the exploration, the examination, the extraction, the evaluation, but also the extrapolation of HR metrics and converting that into the business valued intelligence, in other words, predictive, but also prescriptive analytics. And I'd also like us to critically review and even use as a diagnostic tool, the five best practice and best criteria guidelines to then look at HR metrics and convert that into business intelligence. I think those of you that have watched the preceding episodes, you'll recall that we have mentioned that significant change needs to happen. And I think one of the areas that has to change is of course HR metrics. From my research right across the African continent, in particular in Southern, East and also West Africa, of the 13 HR value chain functions that I've researched, I've found that HR metrics tends to be the most dysfunctional. So the HR metrics and scorecarding process and the conversion to analytics, I think this requires a sense of urgency and this should be escalated not only up the HR, but also the business agenda as a business and HR priority. One of the changes that I'm referring to is HRM will have to migrate from the fundamentals of people science to the complexities of data science. And when I talk about the HR scorecarding process, we know that by design, it is there to promote decisional optimization. In other words, the configuration of the HR metrics dashboard should favor lead and not lag key performance indicators. In other words, hindsight 10%, insight 70%, and also foresight 20%. The cumulative HRM intelligence as reflected in the HR scorecards should be therefore manifestation of the historical trends and patterns, in other words, the descriptive analytics, real-time business priorities and burning issues, the diagnostic analytics, but also the future business projections, in other words, predictive analytics, and also the recommended initiatives, in other words, the prescriptive analytics respectively. Maybe I could just migrate to um, what I'm suggesting as, as a five-step process in terms of graduating from metrics to analytics and then ultimately descriptive and predictive analytics. Like you said earlier on, Milani, then you can start generating business intelligence, um, actionable and, and meaningful uh, insights that will enable and, like you said, empower um, your business managers to make smarter decisions. So exactly what you've described, if, if I have to refer to my five-step process and to make it more memorable, I've attached what I call the five E's. Um, so you'll see step number one is the exploration. And I'm going to go into to each step. I'll go into the detail very shortly. But just to contextualize your comment, Milani. So step one is the exploration. Step two is the examination. What you've described is a very important step. Step three, um, you might argue the most critical step. And that is exactly what you said, the extraction. Um, that is where if you go back to this five-step process, this is where you obtain the relevant data to the identified metrics, which you would have identified um, in step two, in particular of the process. So that's why I've given you that word document so you can work through it. So we're not gonna be able to do it today, but um, you know, on your own time, um, you can work through that. It's a very comprehensive document. You're already spoiled for choice. There's no shortage of HR metrics, um, but you need to be very strategic. And I think Leah said it best. You need to be very selective with your choice of metrics. And the way that I've structured my HR scorecard template, you'll see, Constance, you'll love this. There are six key performance areas. And in each of those six key performance areas, those are the key performance areas where we believe that HR can make a business impact. And in each of those six key performance areas, we drill down and we identify three metrics, the relevant um, metrics um, or the key performance indicators in each of those key performance areas. And then like we said, Leah, they have to be categorized in those three types of metrics. One that speaks to efficiency, one that speaks to effectiveness, and one that speaks to strategic impact. I'll project the spreadsheet very shortly and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm essentially saying, Milani and group, is 
you shouldn't have more than 18 metrics. If you cannot demonstrate and showcase the strategic value proposition and generate primarily business intelligence so that your management team can make smarter decisions, if you cannot do that with 18 metrics, the economists will talk about diminishing returns. You, you know, you can go to 50 or 60 metrics, but it's not going to have any improved impact. This is very important that you compress your scorecard to 18 metrics. Um, I would say maybe minimum of 15 to a maximum of 18 metrics. And those are what you need to then focus on. But once you get to step three, Milani, that's where the extraction comes in. And you need to have an ERP or you need to have a very sophisticated digital data analysis system. With a click of a button, you can generate those reports. But then, of course, you have to interpret and you have to analyze those reports because then they go from data to metrics to analytics. And then when you're sitting with the analytics, you then have to create those actionable and meaningful insights uh, converted into predictive and, of course, prescriptive analytics. So when you do the evaluation, step four, that's the interpretation. That's where you measure where you've achieved um, the actual performance relative to the targeted performance. And then um, step five, that's when we go to the predictive and the prescriptive analytics, because then I call it extrapolation. That's where you do the projection. So you correct where you didn't achieve your targets, but you also then show in terms of, like you said it repeatedly, continuous improvement. In the spirit of continuous improvement, what are we going to do with the next financial cycle, the next financial year? What are we going to do to continue to improve on the HR metric scorecard performance? Um, I think it'll make a lot more sense when I start explaining it. But like you said, Milani, step three is very important. If that is a constraint, then it almost becomes a blockage to the whole process. And then the reporting, the reporting comes in um, at the cross section of step four and step five of the process. So if the extraction and the reporting are the constraints, then it creates tremendous blockages in the system. And it's almost going to be mission impossible, unless, of course, you're Tom Cruise. But it's going to become mission impossible for you to generate meaningful and actionable business intelligence and those insights that are not only going to build your credibility, but also enable and empower management to make smarter decisions. I would not recommend that you continue and you embark on this HR metrics journey, apply and implement the five-step process if you don't have the assurance of a baseline of at least 65%. Um, it's a case of garbage in, garbage out. Um, you are going to contaminate, you're going to counteract or you're going to be counterintuitive and counterproductive if you don't have a solid foundation. So my recommendation would be go back to the HR metrics diagnostic survey. So let's review the 10 best practice criteria for HRA metrics. Firstly, we need to adopt a strategic mindset. Secondly, the change management processes must run parallel with HRA metrics in this business unusual working environment. Number three, we must have a streamlined and systematic HRM process. I've referred to the five E's of that particular process. HR metrics cannot be a desktop exercise. We need to actively walk the floor, so to speak, and engage with our key business partners and other key stakeholders. Firstly, we need to adopt a measurement culture. We need to build capacity and skills for digital literacy. In other words, we need to work on our DQ. Um, sixthly, we need to look at re-injecting the scientific principles, processes, tools, but also building the credibility for HRM metrics. In other words, I refer to the three E's. It needs to be evidentiary, it needs to be ethical, but also needs to be empirical. Seventhly, we need to drill down and do the segmentation of our HRM metrics. Eighthly, we need to apply what I call the four C's to human capital reporting. In other words, the causes, the costs, the consequences, but also the cure. Ninthly, we need to adopt a small scale uh, approach as opposed to the big bang approach to HR metrics. And tenthly, we need to focus on automation. In other words, we need to utilize a sophisticated 5G digital data analysis solution. I'd like to thank you at this point uh, for viewing this very short video clip of HR metrics and scorecarding. This is Dr. Charles Carter signing out. 
Um, I'd also like to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel at this point. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button. Please ring the notified bell for upcoming episodes and you'll see episode 6, which will be uh, published tomorrow. We will focus on HR governance, in particular the governance framework and also the governance toolkit and processes, etc. Also, I've shared my contact details and social media footprint. So you'll find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, on Facebook. Also, my portfolio of slideshow presentations. You're welcome to find that on the slideshow platform. Again, I'd like to say thank you for your support throughout the Strategic Performance Advisor video series. And I look forward to further engagement with the remaining two episodes. Episode 6, HR Governance, but also the concluding episode 7, which then looks at HR auditing principles, but also the process. Thank you. This is Dr. Charles Scott signing out. And again, thank you for your time in viewing this video clip. Thank you. Bye-bye.